mountains. The Appalachian Mountains act as a dam. That's why the word it, the words are used cold air damming. The Appalachian Mountains act as a dam and keep the cooler air just off to the east. But what's going on looking at the levels of the atmosphere is when you go higher up in the atmosphere, we end up having winds coming more out of the west or southwest and that brings in more warmer and uh, humid air, a lot of moisture in the air, and then we end up getting that warm air over cool air, which allows us to get clouds, cool conditions, and then also wet conditions for North Georgia. For today, that cold air damming setup or wedge setup is breaking down. That's why we don't have much in the way of rainfall, but we are still cool and we are still cloudy. Temperatures out there sitting in the 50s all across the region. Notice that this is as of 11.03 a.m. here for North Georgia. We move through the afternoon. These temperatures will get into the upper 50s, lower 60s. Again, a brief shower or two could be possible. We are seeing maybe a little bit of patchy drizzle out there, here and there, but most of us aren't seeing any rainfall. A lot of thick cloud cover over for our neighbors in Alabama and Mississippi. Mississippi and you stretch even further down towards the south and west. They have a lot of cloud cover into Texas and Louisiana, even some rain in Texas. Now they really need the rainfall in Texas. They also need it in Louisiana and Mississippi, Alabama, here in North Georgia. We need the rainfall too. And we all got a little bit of beneficial rain as we headed throughout the last couple of days here. Friday and Saturday brought us rain. We got about seven tenths of an inch just under that here for North Georgia for Friday and Saturday. That was the first rainfall that we had had in the month of November. That was more than 20 days since our last measurable rainfall that uh, by the time we got the rain on Friday. So we were hurting for rain. We are still hurting because we are still three quarters of an inch behind on rainfall for the month. We are still more than seven inches behind on rainfall for the year, and we are going to get some chances for rain here over the next seven days. Today is just a slight chance, likely not going to be much in the way of measurable rainfall at all, maybe just a trace. And in some spots, but for Wednesday and Thursday, we get a little bit of better chance for some rain in here, some more beneficial rainfall, and that shows up on forecast track. First of all, let's go through today. This is by 430 this afternoon on Sunday. Notice temperatures rising to around 60 degrees for the high, mostly cloudy. We are going to get a few peaks of sunshine, though, by the end of the day. Moving into Monday by 730 AM, temperatures starting off in the 40s, partly cloudy. We stay partly cloudy for the afternoon and temperatures will eventually rebound into the 60s for highs. We are going to be uh, more mostly cloudy to start off the day there on Tuesday. We're going to have temperatures in the 40s and 50s for the afternoon. Temperatures rise into the 60s, a lot of cloud cover, and look what's going on to our south and west on Tuesday. There's a lot of shower activity there. That's where our next round of rain is going to come from, from just off to our south and west. You see all that shower activity moving in. By 4 a.m. on Wednesday, it'll arrive on our doorstep, and our rain chances do go up for Wednesday. Remember, you saw that. That's our highest chance for rain. And uh, that's not going to be rain that just impacts us. Again, I think it's going to impact much of the southeast. Taking a look at the drought situation, we still have exceptional drought in far northwest Georgia. Now, the drought monitor only updates every Thursday morning. So this map is going to look the same all the way through Thursday. This map right here that you're looking at does not take into account the rainfall that we had Friday and Saturday. But as we head into Thursday this next week, it will take into account that rainfall. Unfortunately, I would expect that this map is probably going to worsen. We're going to see more exceptional drought and more severe drought. The reason why is I don't think we had enough rainfall to really give enough of an impact on the drought situation. It was beneficial, yes, but it wasn't enough to really push back that drought. It just stopped us from worsening as quickly. Now, we still have a lot of exceptional drought in Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, too. We have the severe drought in far north Georgia as well. Um, we have moderate drought uh, for the Atlanta metro. May end up seeing severe drought in the Atlanta metro by this next update. We'll see what happens uh, with the crew over at the uh, drought monitor where they handle all that information. And uh, we'll, of course, deliver that to you. Again, we are still more than seven inches behind where we should be by this uh, time of year. Uh, over the next seven days, we're not going to add much to the rain gauge. We'll probably get about a half of an inch of rain or less. The spot that needs the rain the most is going to see the smaller amount, far north Georgia, where they're going to get maybe a quarter of an inch if they're lucky. The Atlanta Metro, we're talking more around half of an inch of rainfall, and then areas closer to Macon, maybe about three quarters of an inch of rain. So again, beneficial rain, but not enough to really push back the drought situation. So where are those better chances for rain? First of all, we have the slight chance for a few brief showers today. Um, that is a 20% chance for rain. For Monday, 60 
64 degrees and dry, 63 on Tuesday, 40% chance for rain again on Wednesday, a 30% chance on Thursday. Temperatures staying cool, lows in the 40s and 50s, highs only in the 50s. Back into the 60s for highs on Friday with a slight chance for rain, and then Saturday will be the best day of the week. That's where you like to see it too, on the weekend. 68 there for the high, mostly sunny sky, beautiful conditions. We've got it as a 10 on the wisometer. We may bump it up to an 11 as we move throughout the week, but we'll wait till the forecast has a little more certainty to it as we get closer to next weekend. Taking a look at your 8 to 14 day outlook beyond the 7 day forecast, it looks like our temperatures will be staying above average for much of the southeast. That would mean highs in the upper 60s to lower 70s, so kind of what we're seeing there by Saturday. And then it looks like above average on rainfall. That's important. We need some above average rain chances. It looks like we're going to get that chance as we start to move towards the end of the month of November. And then looking at the tropics, we do have a medium chance for tropical development right now. That's going to be for this area down here. Now, over the next 48 hours, uh, we don't have a chance for tropical development, but it's over the next seven days. And it looks like my map's having trouble populating that area. There we go. Just had to reload it. Uh, we have a 50% chance for tropical development right there as that system, that cluster of thunderstorms, drifts north uh, towards some of the uh, greater Antilles, we're going to end up seeing uh, a chance for tropical development. Now, if that system does get named, it's not out of the normal, by the way, for us to get a named system in the Western Caribbean this time of year. Um, it happens. If that system does get a name, it would be Vince. So uh, we are almost to the end of the list here. We have used a lot of tropical cyclone names all the way through Tammy as the most recent one, which was a category two hurricane at its strongest. We've had a few strong storms. Notice Idalia ended up becoming a category four. Um, Lee became a category five. We had Franklin at a category four. A lot of these storms didn't make landfall anywhere, but they were very uh, strong while they were out there over the Atlantic waters. Of course, we're almost to the end of the season. Season started on June 1st. The climatological peak was back uh, on September 10th, and that's when we had a lot of our activity was right there through the middle to the end of September. Then things started to calm down a little more. November 30th is the end of the season, and uh, you can see things typically quiet down a lot by the time we get to November 30th. Taking a look at your Peach State Outlook, if you're doing any traveling across the state of Georgia over the next three days, we are going to be drier for Monday and Tuesday. By Wednesday, rain chances return to us here in Atlanta. We talked about that a moment ago. It's going to be like that for much of the state, seeing shower activity possible there and those cooler conditions with temperatures back down into the 50s for much of the state. And then your weekend getaways for next weekend. So if you're planning any big trips next week, and I know this was the holiday weekend for Veterans Day, and I hope that um, everybody had a wonderful Veterans Day there on Saturday. But now we're looking at next weekend. It's looking like we are going to be dealing with some shower activity there on Friday in places like Charleston, Gatlinburg, up towards Savannah and Lake Lanier. Uh, could even see a few showers. Destin will be drier. And then rain chances ramping up again by the time we get to Monday. Much of the drier weather will be Saturday and Sunday, with the exception of Gatlinburg, which they could see a few showers there with temperatures in the 60s for highs. And then finally, your Georgia State Park forecast. This is for Monday, so for tomorrow. You see that we're going to have lows there in the 40s and 50s, highs rising into the 60s to even 70s down towards Cloudland Canyon or up towards Cloudland Canyon, excuse me. It will be um, some nice conditions out there for uh, some hiking on Monday. One of the better days this week to do some hikes. And you know what? Thanks to the most recent rain, some of the waterfalls should be really pretty, like Amicalola Falls and then over towards Tulula Gorge. I'm sure it is going to look beautiful right now, too, with the recent rainfall. Also, go out there and take some photos of some of the beautiful fall foliage. Send it back to you and to us. Use that. Uh, 11 Alive Storm Trackers Facebook group so you can share your weather wow moments and then we'll share them on TV. Then you have to tune in so you can see uh, your photo shared right there on 11 Alive. So we want to run everything back up to the seven day forecast. Don't forget we love to do all these updates every single Sunday at 11 a.m. and then we also do them on Wednesdays typically at 2.30 as long as there's nothing else impeding our, our ability to, to be able to do this. Sometimes we have other things going on in the studio and we're unable to do them on Wednesdays at 2.30 and we sometimes have to push them back to a different time, maybe also on Thursdays like what we had to do this past week. But typically it will be Wednesdays at 2.30 and then also Sundays at 11 a.m. Uh, don't forget that you can get an update on the forecast whenever you're on the go. I want to also 
bringing that up, the 11 Alive app, uh, download this. It can be real useful, especially on a day like Wednesday when we're going to have a few scattered showers. You can get live looks at the radar whenever you're on the go. Get uh, current conditions. That is the current condition right now for 11:13 uh, in the afternoon or in the morning. Excuse me, on Sunday. You see that as we head throughout the afternoon. Cloud cover starts to break up. Temperature sitting about 60. You can hit the daily tab to get the seven day forecast. And then you can also send in your weather wow well moments right there on the app or watch the newscast live. Also, make sure you download the 11 Alive Plus app. If you ever see a story or uh, see some weather information and you want a little bit more about it because you can only show so much on TV, like uh, we typically get about a minute and 30 to tell a full story on uh, TV uh, due to time restrictions. But on the 11 Alive Plus app, sometimes we do more long form content. Sometimes you can watch a 20 minute story on that same story that you just saw a little bit on on TV. You can get that extra information. Download that 11 Alive Plus app to your Roku and Fire TV device. So I'm meteorologist Andrew Wilson. Don't forget, we'll continue to keep you updated on the forecast right here on 11 Alive online and on air. Have a wonderful week ahead of you.